<clears throat> well, <laughs> better late than never. <laughs> I I don't know what happened. I, I think, I don't know what happened, but I just got the spinning circle of going live, death. So I'm here and um, I know you're not. <laughs> I may pick up a few viewers here and there. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> but geez, technology. Oh, well. Oh, well. Anyway, that's a crutch word. I'm here. <laughs> We're picking up some people. Oh, what a nightmare. I, I don't know why it froze. I restarted my machine. But the good news is, <clears throat> Stefan, how you doing? Daddy. I, I, I didn't know I had two sons. Anyway. I thought I only had one. <laughs> um, the um, uh, what did I want to tell you? Um, it's going to be an interesting live stream today. One of the things I'm going to do, we're going to do an experiment on Saturday morning. Uh, I've been streaming every Monday through Friday at four in the afternoon. We thought we would uh, pick up and try to do it Saturday morning just to see what happens. Um, I'm not. If you want to be here, that's great. If if um, not, no no worries. Roko, how you doing? Yes, good night. Yeah, I I just closed out of that tab. Uh, I tried to launch it again, and same thing. So, uh, but here's the good news. Here's what I'm gonna say. Just an hour ago, a UPS truck showed up with my new Mac Mini. So, my monitor's been here for about a week. I have this monster flipping monitor, <laughs> and um, 34 inches wide. <laughs> And uh, but I found out today I'm so spoiled after using this iMac, you know, with the built in speakers. I all of a sudden I thought, I wonder if that monitor has any speakers, no speakers. <laughs> so I texted my son, like, Hey, I gotta have some speakers. <laughs> We're gonna talk about crumbling concrete in just a minute and the ancient secret paint. Yeah, I cannot wait to see how this, it's an LDG or whatever. It's uh, so My son said it's a rocking monitor. We'll see. Um, Stefan, how old are you? So, Stefan, how old are you? That's what I want to know. You tell me how old you are. And better yet, let's imagine you're working at the, at the, uh, at the, what, the, the, the uh, circus or the carnival. Remember, they have those guys, like when I was a kid, it's at Coney Island, they had, um, they had a, a guy that would either guess your weight and they had another person that guessed age. So you guess how old I am. You you try to make a guess and I'll tell you if you're close. Uh, and also, why do you want to know how old I am? Just curious. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, if you have any questions about crumbling concrete uh, or concrete repair in general, type it in the chat, you know, because then I'll make sure I cover that when we get started talking. So don't be bashful. Go ahead and type in any question you have about repairing concrete. And even it could be repairing stucco. It could be repairing anything that's related to that. It's all kind of the same method for the most part. Uh, but I'm going to share something with you that I'll bet you you've never heard of before, unless you've been to my website and, and already read a couple of columns. Uh, but I have a secret method secret re recipe that was told to me by a concrete mason many 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 years ago 45 46 years ago the um so anyway type any questions you have about that you might have about repairing concrete in the chat happy to answer them happy to answer them and also you should be checking in anyway uh and just list one of your superpowers uh that's what i had originally on the first setup but it got all wiped out so if you haven't checked in yet please do it's the polite thing to do just say hi and uh, if you can list one of your superpowers, that'd be great, because you might know something that I'd like to know about. Um, so like Stefan. See, Stefan, we chased him away. He doesn't want to guess he, he, why he wants to know how old I am. Who knows? Who, why would anyone? Stefan, why, why do you want to know that? Tell me. Tell me why you want to know. <laughs> okay, let's get started on the uh, repairing crumbling concrete, because then we're going to jump to some other topics. We're, one of the things I'm going to talk about afterwards is, um, um, yes, uh, exactly. Uh, one of the things I'm going to share with you after the crumbling concrete is an overnight email I received from one of my newsletter subscribers 
just taking me to the woodshed about um, about the Civil War. <laughs> and wait till you hear my response. <laughs> I haven't heard from him all day, and I, I think so. I think I put him. I think I put him right back to where he belongs. All right. So, crumbling concrete. Um, here's the most common cause of crumbling concrete. And I'm not talking about where the entire slab just falls apart. That's actually kind of rare. That uh, I mean, you may see that from time to time, but more often than not, what you'll see is, is like the top quarter inch of the concrete where it will delaminate. And then instead of seeing the nice sandy texture, you see the rough aggregate and rough stones underneath. All right. You want to see how to test? Okay, that's that, we'll talk about that in a little bit. How to test uh, if a wall is structurally sound? The so we call the technical term for that where where the top surface delaminates is called spalling, and and the typical reason for it is it, it's actually there's there's several things that could be going on, but typically what might have happened is the concrete finisher might have sprinkled some water on the concrete because the slab was getting away from him, meaning it was getting hard and he was finding it increasingly difficult to trowel it to get a good finish. And when you sprinkle water on the concrete like that, you dilute the cement paste at the surface. And the cement paste, you know, remember concrete's just four things. It's the stone, sand, Portland cement, and water. So the Portland cement is what holds everything together. That's what holds the stones and the sand together. So you don't want to dilute that. It's very important that that is, is strong. And especially if you live where I do in New Hampshire or, or any place that gets freezing weather uh, because water is absorbed into concrete. And when the water is absorbed into the, the micro pores of the concrete and it freezes, it expands by 9%. And the concrete needs to be strong enough to resist that, that ice trying to tear it apart. And when it's not strong enough, that's typically the cause of the delamination. You'll, you'll find if you go down south, if you go to Florida, uh, southern part of Texas, where they really don't get southern California, uh, you, you typically rarely see spalled concrete. And uh, that's the, the reason you don't is because they don't have the freezing weather. Um, now, how do you repair it? If it's just, it, even if you have to add um, an inch or two of concrete, no problem. So let's just talk about a thin overlay, though, first. Let's talk about how the top surface is spalled off. You just want to restore that top surface. So you're going to just mix up some cement stucco, which is just a, it's just a blend of Portland cement and sand. And depending on the thickness that you're going to add, it is the type of sand you'll use. Because sand, typically, believe it or not, if you've not been to a um, like a gravel pit, sand comes typically in three grades, coarse, medium, and fine. Uh, if you were going to put in a really thin overlay, like an eighth of an inch, you would have to use fine sand. Quar if you're going to put quarter inch overlay or like a stucco, you'll use medium. A three eighths, then you'll use the coarse sand. Uh, because what happens, the coarse sand you can get pieces of uh, aggregate, little pieces of stone. I mean, remember, all that sand is, it's just tiny pieces of rock, very tiny pieces of rock. And with coarse sand, you can have pieces of, of rock that are, they're almost, uh, they're like um, 3 sixty-fourths of an inch. I mean, they're, they, get, they can get pretty big. I mean, you know, so you don't want to try to use those in a very thin overlay. All right, now. Okay, so your garage floor, so tech support your garage floor. That's just, here's how we're going to finish it. So let's just say we're going to put a quarter inch on. All right, you're going to use medium sand. You're going to, I, I like to make the mix strong. I like to put in uh, like two measures of, two measures of, of, of sand to one measure of Portland cement. And then I would add a half a measure of, Hydrated lime, if you can get it, you, sh you should be able to get it at a building supply place. Hydrated lime, fantastic, sticky. It's, it, it just adds so much stickiness to the mix. 
And you're going to mix that up until it's the consistency of applesauce. This is about the best way to describe it. If you've ever opened up a jar of applesauce and you know you can kind of pour it out, that's the, that's what you're looking to do. How do you get this mix to stick permanently to the old concrete? That's what most people that's where most people fail. I was lucky enough to be taught an old trick many, many years ago, um, almost probably 46 years ago, by an old concrete mason. He was in his 70s. And he taught me that the way you get the new to bond to the old, common sense will tell you, first of all, that you're going to make sure that the spalled concrete is clean. You've gotten all the dust off. There's no loose material. That's kind of a common sense thing. And then you have to you have to get it slightly damp, not wet, just damp. And then you paint onto it cement paint. And you're going to say, well, I've never seen cement paint at the store, Tim. No lie. You bet you haven't. You make it yourself. And all cement paint is, it's just Portland cement and clean water. And I recommend you use as cold a water as you can use because you don't want it to set up in the bucket. And you just mix up the Portland cement and the cold water to the consistency of regular latex paint. You take an old four inch paintbrush, paint it on. You don't have to put it on super thick and you immediately cover it with your cement patching mix that we just talked about. Uh, you do not want the cement paint to dry. So this means that the best working conditions are when it's overcast, no threat of rain, just overcast gray day, and if the temperature could be like 60 degrees, that's ideal. The worst possible time to do this repair is 90 degree day, bright sunshine, breezy, everything dries too quickly. So don't do it then. What kind of questions do you have? That's basically the easy way to do it. You can do this exact same process if you want to add more concrete, meaning if you want to add an inch of concrete or an inch of half concrete, if you need to... Uh, rebuild a corner on a foundation, same exact process. But when you're working with stuff that's in the air, like a wall or a corner of a foundation, you might need to drive some pins in to hold it. And you typically have to work in lifts. You have to add stuff every day. You can't add a bunch of thick concrete because it'll just droop and drop to the ground. All right. So if you got questions, ask them. Now's the time to ask them. In the meantime, I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk about good night's question, how to test uh, if a concrete wall structurally sound. So I would typically just tap it with a hammer, and 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 a, a concrete wall that is sound, you get a really distinctive um, pinging sound. Is about the best way to describe it. Um, if 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 the wall's in bad shape and you hit it with a hammer, I don't mean hit it really hard with a sledgehammer, although you can just medium or light tap with a sledgehammer. Um, you know, it'll start to fall apart. You know, it'll just crumble a little bit. So that, that's how I do it. I just tap it with a hammer and I just go around and tap it in different places. All right. Any questions about anything to do with concrete repair, uh, stucco repair? I don't care what it is. And also you can ask any question you want um, about um, your home. You know, I don't care what, what question you might have. Um, you know, it could be, Roofing question, it could be a plumbing question, uh, doesn't matter what it is. Um, happy to help you. Maybe you're going to buy a new home and you're going to do a home inspection. You know, did you know you can do your own preliminary inspection before you spend 600 bucks on an inspector? Um, I, 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 I've got that checklist for you if you want. Uh, let me, let me now, uh, while I'm waiting for your questions, uh, and remember, you're supposed to check in, uh, that's the polite thing to do. I'm not going to stalk you at your YouTube channel. Just it's polite to say hello. And if you want to list one of your superpowers, go ahead and do that. In the meantime, I want to share with you. Um, well, before I do that, here we go. Good night, Scott. Is powering a wall the same as putting on? Uh, so um, I think you mean, I think you mean parging, maybe. Do you mean parging? Uh, yeah, I think you mean parging. So, yes, the answer to that would be yes. Uh, in other words, you would just, uh, sometimes when, in the old days, when they poured concrete foundations, um, the the end product was really pretty rough because of the lumber they used. They didn't use the smooth panels that we now use. And the walls were pretty rough. 
so the builders would always uh, parge it. They would always put a, a thin the stucco coat on it. You know, they would have a plaster come and it only took a day to do it. So, um, yes. So anyway, so yeah, parging. So that, yeah, it's just a thin coat of stucco. And depending on when they would do it, sometimes they would just put the stucco right on the fresh concrete. They wouldn't do the cement paint. That, in my opinion, that's a mistake. Uh, hello, 8-Bit Vinyl. Good. Um, hello, Lynn. Thanks for checking in. Thanks for checking in. Uh, if you have a question about anything about your home, Lynn, go ahead and ask. That's why I'm here. That's the only reason I do these live streams. I don't do the live streams to just blabber on uh, because that's a complete waste of time, in my opinion. Bob's here. Bob's always got good questions. All right, Bob. Uh, I need to replace my 20-year-old GFWA HVAC system. What are your thoughts on the newer heat pump systems for HVAC and water heating? Well, um, I, I mean, I've got, you know, the modern systems are great. I, I, what I don't understand is, is your whole system, uh, is your uh, GFW. So I, I don't understand that acronym. What does that mean? Gianni, I'll get to your question in just a second. I, I don't, or do you have a forced air system, Bob? Is, is your, is it a hot water radiant system? I don't, I don't understand what you've got. So you have to tell me. Gianni, I'll get to you in just a second. Don't worry. Uh, gas forced warm air. Okay, great. Um, well, you can't beat gas heat. You, I mean, well, to me, radiance the best. Forced air, I, you know, I get it. I, I grew up with forced air. But once I've had radiant for the past 14 years, I would never have forced air again. Um, the furnaces, I, I mean, just make sure you get one. Well, for example, my boiler is a modulating boiler. And what a modulating boiler means is that it only, it can go on, it can go anywhere from 100% BTU to 19%. And so it, it senses what the load is. So it goes, oh, only one zone's calling for heat. So I'm just going to turn on a little bit. It basically just think of the burner on your stove. So a gas burner on your stove, you can put it on simmer or you can put it on high to boil water as rapidly as possible. Make sure you get a furnace. Hopefully you can get one for your forced air system. I'm not an expert. I can't keep up with all the technology. Hopefully you can get a modulating furnace like that. I'm sure you can. There's not a doubt in my mind. That's going to be the best way to save money. And almost all the modern furnaces are 95%, 97% efficient. Just get a brand name. You should be in good shape. Okay, uh, let me get caught up with Gianni. And we've got a lot of good questions coming in. This is great. All right, this is exactly what, what makes the live stream happen. If you have questions, you need to ask them. And we're just going to march right through them. Gianni, dryer vent goes out the roof. Okay, good. That's where it should go. Two stories. I want to have a drop to go out the side wall, but to create a soffit inside a bedroom do so. Uh, yeah, that's perfectly fine. That's a great way to do it. Just make sure two things. Make sure you use metal pipe. Make sure when you put the metal pipe together, you know, it comes, it, it kind of, it's kind of curved like this, and it's got an interlocking seam, you know, where it locks in together. So make sure when you're installing this pipe, any horizontal run that that seam is always pointing to the sky, all right? Uh, make sure you use all metal pipe, all right? And then wherever you have joints, wherever two pieces of pipe or a pipe goes into a fitting, you can buy traditional true duct tape, not the crap stuff at the home centers. You need to buy the true duct tape that the HVAC people use. It's actually metal tape. It's very sharp. You can cut your hand. It's got an incredible adhesive on it. And so every place where a male, you know, so where a, a male end of a fitting goes into a female, I'm trying to do this, a male goes into a female. So right along this seam here at the end of the female, make sure you put the tape, you know, split that seam and make sure once again, that when you wrap the tape, that the overlap is at the top. All right. So do that. And you're going to be fine. Make sure you, check your dryer manual for the maximum run. In other words, it's really, really important uh, that you don't exceed the maximum linear footage. Remember that each 90 counts as 10 feet of footage. Uh, a 45 is five feet, you know, because of resistance. 
should be in good shape. And make sure you put on a really nice uh, vent hood on the outside. Uh, uh, brown, go to Brown. They make good wall caps. They're called wall caps. So a dryer wall cap. Okay, let's get caught up. Hello. Uh, let's see. Jimmy Jimmy checked in. Um, 8-bit vinyl. Quick, sec, bleh, quick question about sauna tubes that are 8 to 12 inch diameter, 4 feet down. Do you, uh, here comes the what? Here comes Kathy. With her sunglasses on. She looks she looks just like she did when I dated her when she wears sunglasses. Um, uh, they're 8 to 12 inch diameter, 4 feet down. Do you use rebar in them? Uh, if so, how many sticks of it? Yes. I, I, I would always put um, rebar in. They would go all the way to the bottom. And uh, it comes within two inches of the top, all right? And I would hope that you're going to, if you're going to put sonotubes in, now there's a better system than sonotube, just so you know. It's on my website. It's that orange plastic tube, man. You've got to get it. It's called, um, it's got a strange name. Um, go watch my videos about concrete piers and deck piers. And you'll see me use this snap together orange form that already comes with rebar pre-bent. It's an amazing system, you know, and it's bell shaped because you want the bottom of the pier to be wider than the top, or otherwise the frost is going to take your pier right up out of the ground. You know, you live here in New Hampshire, so got to use what I used on my uh, deck. I've got great photos of it on my website. If you can't find them, let me know. Uh, I did not get your email, 8-bit eight, eight vinyl. You need to try that again. So Tim at askthebuilder.com or you can try askthebuilder at gmail.com. Lynn. All right, I have a chunk of cinder block foundation crack. Okay, how do I repair this? Uh, there's a crack on the ceiling of the interior bedroom. Uh, well, okay, sounds like it's two separate problems, Lynn. Um, the um, I have a three video series. Um, let me go get it for you. I'll do you a favor right now. I got a, I got three videos that you need to watch. Here, oh, come back here. I have got three videos that explain the cement paint, everything we just talked about. So, Lynn, you are going to go here, and you are hopefully you're going to watch these three videos. So go to that link and watch those three. It's going to tell you how to fix your concrete block. I actually drove to uh, Virginia or wherever I was to fix this lady's, to tell her how to fix her concrete foundation. She won a, she won a, she was the grand prize winner in, in one of my contests. Um, all right. So now your ceiling crack. Um, I That's probably, that could be a number of things. I would probably have to see a photo of that. And if the way to send the photo to me is you go to, to my website, askthebuilder.com, and in the navigation, you'll see a link to Ask Tim. Go to that page, fill out the form. Uh, you can upload, I think, two or three photos. I, I need to see what's going on. I need a little bit more information to give you the right answer about the ceiling crack. I, without without a, a bigger data set, I'm just going to be, you know, grasping at straws. All right, Jimmy, I'm dry, just feeling, um, drying, just finished tubing of, okay, good for you. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Number 33, cold weather aluminum tape. Exactly. You know exactly what I was talking about, Jimmy. It's great stuff, isn't it? It's fantastic tape. Most people don't know about it. Most homeowners, you know, because the stupid, all those years ago, that term duct tape got bastardized. Just like now, like in other words, the there's that TV channel on cable. I refuse to say the name, but they've taken the term whitewash and they've ruined it. They, they say, oh, we're going to whitewash today. And, and they get out a, a can of flipping white latex paint and add water to it. That's not whitewash. That's thin down paint. So they ruined the they ruined the, the, the name duct tape. All right. Uh, here is 01. I'm just going to call you 01. ISO 1. ISO 1. That's what I'm going to call you. My builder, person doing trim on outside, covered up a quarter of my bathroom exhaust vent with trim under the soffit. Yes. 
yes, it's absolutely going to cause problems. It's absolutely worth correcting. And just so you know, the uh, the worst place you could put a bathroom exhaust vent is under a soffit. <laughs> and the reason why is 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 it, the some of that moist air will get back into the soffit and then potentially go up underneath the roof, and it's going to cause mold and rot problems underneath your roof sheathing. So it's the worst possible place to put the, uh, the vent. All right. Um, okay, good, Lynn. Yeah, watch those three videos that shows you exactly what to do. And if you want me to help you with your ceiling crack problem, you got to give me more information via my website. Ah, uh, all right. Um, what's the total on Discord? I, I've lost track. Um, it slowed down a little bit. Uh, I didn't promote it in last Sunday's newsletter. Um, I don't know, 150 people. Uh, it's it's slow. Uh, it, there, after being there now for three weeks, uh, that community, in my opinion, it's not really it's not really home improvement related, which I kind of knew jumping in. I thought that. I mean, I read about it. You know, it was originally built for the gaming people and um, the gaming community, but it's 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 but it's the bandwidth has has gotten wider as to who's using it, what kind of groups are on there. I could, for all I know, uh, I could be the first home improvement a Discord server. For all I know, um, one seventy two. There we go. Um, all right. Uh, any other questions? Uh, feel free to ask them. Um, happy to help. Happy to help. We got some great questions so far. Really great ones. Um, and you know, ISO one, ISO one, you got to fix that. You got to go go back to my website, askthebuilder.com, and type in bathroom, bathroom exhaust. Read all of my past columns, and you'll read exactly what you should do. Uh, what and what more importantly, what not to do. And the soffit is the worst place to put it, especially if you live in a cold climate. But it really doesn't matter. <laughs> Jason, flipping lurker. <laughs> no one likes lurkers. No one likes lurkers. No, there's not a person on the planet who likes a lurker. <laughs> ah. All right. <laughs> you just got here. Good night once now. Can you wet sand a cement wall to clean it or will that cause further damage? You can wet sand a cement wall. I mean, a concrete wall. Um, I don't know why you would want to do it. Um, if I was going to clean a concrete wall, I would just mix. Well, you can use some of my stain solver. You can use some of this stain solver. Uh, you can also just mix up some Dawn liquid dish soap and water and Get it real sudsy and spray it on. Scrub it with a scrub brush. Rinse it. It'll be nice and clean. Um, you know. So anyway, uh, to keep the dust down. Well, that so you would wet clean it just like I just described. Would just just like you would wash a car. You know, you should have no dust. Uh, all right. Any other questions? Boy, a lot this today. Sometimes we get hardly any questions. Today we've got great questions, great questions. Um, wonderful questions. All right, while you're while you're typing your next question, whatever it might be, and you can ask a question about anything. It does not matter what it is. Remember, that's why I'm here. I do the live streams to help save you time and money. There's, It's nothing hard about this at all. So ask any question about your home. You can ask any question about Ask the Builder. It doesn't matter. Ten days ago in my newsletter, I did a little piece about inflation. And I, in, within the newsletter, I told people to go check this, um, this article out at Hillsdale College website. Really pretty good article explaining inflation and, more importantly, the history of inflation. All right. So it... Um, I mean, infl it was really interesting. Inflation was rampant in Rome. I mean, back in, 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 in ancient Rome, they had a big inflation and one of the uh, emperors figured out how to solve the problem. And um, it really interesting article, right? 
And and then as it's marching through the history of inflation, they talk about the Civil War here in America. And um, the what happened is in a war economy, typically what happens, uh, both people fighting the war, they need money to buy stuff, to buy supplies and whatever. And they can turn on their printing presses, and, they, and if they print too much money, it dilutes it, the value. And that's what ha- and, and what happened is the South, the Confederates, they they really trashed their 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 money. I mean, it was it tr- basically it was worthless. It wasn't even worth the paper it was pr- printed on. And and so I, you have to understand that if you know anybody in the South here in the United States, if you know anyone in the South, um, I. The, and and they have relatives who fought in the conflict. There's a really good chance that they will call that conflict the war of northern aggression. All right, that's I know a bunch of people down south who do it. They still call it that. And if you go online and check it, it's a it's a it's a fact. In other words, people use that term. Some people use that term to describe the the um, civil war. Just, just and I'll give you an example. So last year, I guess it was last summer. I think everything's all blurred to me. Last summer, I think there was there were riots in 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 Kenosha, Wisconsin. All right, at Kyle Rittenhouse, that whole deal about him. All right, there were riots. I mean, riots. They were burning stuff up, and there were some people even on the news with a microphone calling it a peaceful protest. So they're looking at the same thing. <laughs> One person calls it a riot, or many people call it a riot. Another person calls it a peaceful protest. So. You know, so it's possible for some people to call it the Civil War, other people to call it the North War of Northern Aggression. All right, just a fact. Doesn't matter. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it sticks and noodles. I don't care. So, um, <laughs> I'm going to share this email I got. But if you have a question about your home, go ahead and type it in the chat. I'll answer. I'm waiting for you to type your question. That's why I'm telling the story. I'm trying to kill time, just so you know. So overnight. I get this email from one of my, I'm not going to tell you, give it, give you his name. I'll, I'll save him that embarrassment. <laughs> and uh, he, he starts it out, brother Tim. So I thought that was a little passive aggressive. All right. <laughs> and then he immediately says, you are wrong to say it's all a matter of perspective. There is such a thing as truth. <laughs> so this guy's going to lecture me about the truth. Remember, in my newsletter, all I just said is you'll read about how, I think I said you'll read about how inflation uh, hastened the end of the war of northern aggression. That's all I said. I didn't say anything about anything else. For instance, if you think Putin's perspective is cool, hey, look at things from his point of view. Then Russia's invasion of Ukraine is okay. But it's not. It's a horrific imperialist land grab that violates one of the most important principles, national sovereignty. All right, so when I read that, (laughs) I just got the biggest grin on my face. This is like this morning at 6.15 in the morning. I'm reading this, all right? And if you were here on the live stream, could have been a month ago. A month ago, one person showed up one day and taught me something I did not know. And you'll find out in just a minute. I I couldn't believe it. I was just like, what? Because I don't, I wasn't taught that in my history classes. All right. So anyway, let's move on. He says one of the most important principles: national sovereignty. Okay, remember that it's really important. Likewise, the Civil War in the United States was not a war of northern aggression, no matter what state you are from. I don't know how this. I, I, I don't know. Is this guy a PhD in physics? I mean, in history? Who knows? The facts are the Confederacy seceded from the United States a counter-revolutionary action against United Americans' first revolution that overthrew foreign monarchical rule and established democracy, however imperfect. The Civil War was the second American revolution. I disagree. I think we're in that right now. It's abolishing slavery and adding the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments to the Constitution was a tremendous advance for our working people. However, much of it was undermined by the northern capitalists capitulating to the former slave owners and allowing counter-revolutionary terror to establish vicious Jim Crow rule for over 100 years. You are simply dead wrong when you say, look at it from the southern perspective. It was a war of northern aggression. You might as well say, hey, 
Look at it from the Nazi perspective. They were just trying to clean out the subhuman filth that was blood sucking and destroying Germany when they slaughtered 6 million Jews. No, it's not all about perspective. Truth and facts matter. I hope you're typing questions so I don't have to keep going. You're supposed to be typing questions about your house. So I respond. <laughs> and I didn't respond with everything because um, I was waiting for him to get back because I was going to save the, I was kind of teeing him up. If I know Will's not here today, but I was teeing him up, you know, with my first response, because then if he came back, I was going to really get him. And I go, Steve. Oh, sorry. I said his name. Uh, I won't tell you his last name. It seems you're all against imperialistic land grabs, right? Why didn't you state that you're the president of the Give Back Hawaii, Panama, Guam, and Amer American Samoa Club? <laughs> if you're not the president, can you tell me starting today what you're going to do to ensure we respect the national sovereignty of those former nations? <laughs> After all, you say truth and facts matter. <laughs> Once you stop being a hypocrite, then you can start back up thumping your chest about how evil it is to do land grabs. And your entire argument is laughable because you feel there's only one perspective, yours. And then I, I sign off. <laughs> so that's the kind of email I get overnight. That's, that's, what, that's what comes in to ask the builder. All right. <laughs> Here we go. All right. We finally got some questions. Jason's got a question. Jason doesn't have questions that often, but that's good. Uh, in your oh, okay, I got I got just what Jason says. In your opinion, what is the best way to paint around baseboards, cabinets, and ceilings? Right here. I got it right here, buddy. So this is a brush that I broke one day. I, I actually, what happened is my dog, Lady the dog, this big German Shepherd. One day got into my garage. I wasn't paying attention. She found this brush. You know, it had a beautiful handle on it. And she starts gnawing on it. <laughs> she she basically gnaws the flipping handle off. All right. That's okay. I love her. Well, she's she's gone now. All right. Um, so this is tapered brush. I don't know if you can see that, Jason. Um, this is a two inch. Um, and it's I I I've abused it, and so you can see the bristles here are kind of flailed out here and here. So typically when you take care of a brush, the, 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 the bristles are all together. You know, I mean, they look beautiful. And there's this, and I have a special video on, on the website to show how to clean brushes. Most people don't know how to clean paint brushes. All right, so you, the professionals, here's what the professionals do. The professionals learn how to use this and they cut in. All right, so in other words, you have to put just the right amount of paint on. There's a ton of videos on YouTube that show this technique and you can, it's a, here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to be sitting there taping and putting on that painter's tape. It's too tedious and it, it doesn't really work that well. You, you'd be surprised how well, if you have halfway decent hand-eye coordination, you just use a tapered brush. It's really, um, that would be a great uh, demo video for me to do. Um, maybe I, maybe I'll do that. I, I might do a, I might do that. I might do a, um, like a bunch of painting tips video, but I'll sell. I'm not going to put it on for free on YouTube. I'm done with that. I'm done with that. All right. So that's that's how I do it. And that's how the professionals do it. You're not going to see the professionals tape stuff off. The only time they're going to tape stuff off is if they're spray painting. All right. Uh, Gianni says, I know you're not a fan. Of, uh, okay. I'm going to get down to yours in a second. Uh, I'll get down to your thing, Gianni. Uh, ice for 01. I'm thinking about converting my bathtub to a shower. Okay. Is it better to install a pre-made pan or tile? Yes. Pre-made pan is better. Uh, well, well, here's the big problem you've got. So your big problem, just so you know, I've been a licensed master plumber since 1981. Is Now, I know this sounds crazy, all right, because it's never made sense to me, and I've never... And there, you can't ask the invisible code people. But in the plumbing code, when we pipe for a new home, uh, you have to put a two-inch drain in for showers. All right? Two-inch drain. Here's what's odd, is, is that it's 
if you if you put a bathtub in, it's only an inch and a half drain pipe. But the shower valve is the same <laughs> as the tub valve for the most part. And especially now with the new uh, fascist uh, autocratic thing about uh, these low flow faucets, which I don't I don't even begin to understand. I mean, I'll talk about that in a minute if you want. We, we don't have a water problem in America. There's only a a few places, they cause that themselves. Like if you decide you're going to go live out in the flipping desert, then I don't want to hear you crying and bitching and moaning that you don't have enough water. All right. I don't want to hear it. Seriously. I mean, water, water's the most important thing to live. You have to have water. So wh why would you go live someplace where there's no water? All right. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear your, like, if you decide to do that, well, then you can put the low flow stuff at your home. Don't make me put it in my house here in New Hampshire where I have unlimited water. All right. And probably 95% of the people in America, well, I'll say 90, have unlimited water. All right. Now, I'll explain that in a minute. So to do it right, you you should you should repipe the drain and make it two inch, but that's a nightmare. But you can connect your shower pan to the inch and a half drain line and as long as the drain line is clear and you've got a great opportunity, you're doing all this work, take everything apart and make sure it's clear, make sure it's not halfway clogged up, you should never have a problem because you're not going to have that much water flowing from the shower that's going to overload that drain. So I hope that answers your questions. Uh, I, I I have to tell you, I love Kohler's. Um, Kohler makes fantastic shower pans, These you know, the pre pre-made ones. They, they make really great ones. So go with Kohler. Gianni, I know you're not a fan of roof ridge vents. Here's why. Good thing Will's not here. If Will was here, he would, here's what he would be typing right now. Did you get the whiteboard? No, I did not get the whiteboard. And I'm not going to get the whiteboard. Because I have these, and I have an abundance of paper I just found. So, Gianni, I'm going to draw a picture and show you why um, ridge vents don't work. Uh, I got a bunch of colored markers. Here we go. So, bear with me. All right, and here's the sheathing. I'm not going to draw the shingles, okay? Bear with me. Uh, we'll do a nice color for the ridge vent. We'll make the ridge vent green, all right? This is what they typically look like. Here's the hot air. All right. Here's why I don't like ridge vents, because I don't know about you, but I paid attention in my high school physics classes and my college physics classes. Here's what's going on. So this is, uh, it's so hard to do this in reverse. It's so hard. All right. So this is the um, rafter. Uh, the green is the ridge vent. And, um, you know, there's a space where you know, I'm, everything, there's all this latency. There's a space where the air can get out. So here's the hot air in your attic. The um, What does hot air do? Which direction does it go? It only goes one way. It goes up, right? It goes up. So what makes anybody think that the hot air is going to go up the ridge vent and then come down the roof four inches? It's got to come down. It's got to come down. It's the only way out and then get out, all right? It, they don't work. So I tested this one day. I tested it. I went up into the attic of my home in Cincinnati on a June day, as close to the solstice as I could. Flipping, blistering sun, not a cloud in the sky. It's solar noon. It was about 145 degrees in the attic. It was, I mean, it's, it's, it's so hot that as soon as you go up in there, you immediately start to perspire. I light a stick of incense. There's no, there's no wind outside. 
It's a calm day. I hold, <clears throat> I've got a flashlight. I've got a stick of incense burning. And I'm thinking like, oh, please hurry, hurry. I got to get out of here. I'm going to die. I'm going to pass out if you don't hurry up. And the smoke comes off the incense and does not go anywhere. In other words, this it's not like there was suction sucking the smoke up off the incense, down and out. It, it, in other words, the smoke was just, just floating right there, just floating, just floating, you know, under the ridge vent. It was not going anywhere. All right. So these ridge vent people, they can bite me because they don't work under that condition. Now, if the wind's blowing outside, yes, there is some suction that can happen. The better way to ventilate your roof is just a turbine vent, the old fashioned whirly birds. They are the absolute best way to ventilate a roof. Simple as that. So there's your education. Go to my website, askthebuilder.com, read all of my columns about turbine vents. And I have the best ones there. The best ones made are right there. <clears throat> all right. Hey, Louise, how you doing? <clears throat> all right, Meryl, how you doing? Uh, please comment on installing a chair on flight steps. Um, sure. The biggest thing you have to make sure is that the... Um, that that entire system is going into solid uh, the 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 wall studs. They can be using anchors. I mean, they've they've got to attach that to solid wood. You sure as heck don't want that thing pulling off. So that's really, I mean, the companies that normally put those in are pretty good, pretty. Uh, they're pretty professional. So I I I think you're not going to have any trouble if you hire a professional company. I, but I would ask them. I would be there when the installers are there and say, show me, just do me a favor. Show me how you know when you drive that fastener that you are absolutely in the center of the wall studs. Just show me that. Show me how you're going to do that. It's really that simple. LPN. Boston with, my, where's the flipping whiteboard? <laughs> <laughs> no whiteboard. I, I was decluttering my office and I was going through some boxes out behind that door and I come across all this flipping old fashioned um, three ring binder paper. I mean, hundreds of pieces of this paper. So it just seems crazy. I'm, I'm such a, and I'm so frugal in some ways. It's like, I'm not going to waste this paper. I, you know, no one in my family is going to use it. So why go out and buy a whiteboard when I already have markers and I can just use that paper. So that's what I'm going to do. No whiteboard. All right. ISO 1. Thank you. Great information. Is there a Kohler that will fit directly? Or di no, there's not. You're going to have to do repiping. And I can coach you over the phone for it. I do phone coaching. Uh, self self depreciating plug here for my uh, phone coaching. Here's the link. And I'll tell you a quick story about Zoe. And if this story doesn't convince you to call me, nothing will. All right. So if you want me to call you on the phone and help you so you don't make a mistake, I can do it. It's the cheapest money you're going to spend on the whole project. Uh, just about a year ago, I had a woman, a young woman. I think she was like 28 years old. I didn't ask her. Not polite. Not polite to talk to women about their age. I don't care how old they are. You don't ever ask. Of course, you never ask how much they weigh. Never, none of your business. All right. So just like what's his name early in the stream. Once know how old I am. Are you serious? <laughs> Are you serious? Was that a flipping scammer who's trying to collect my pr private information so that he can hack my credit card? You know, that's the only thing that could be. That's the only thing that could have been. Idiot. Flipping idiot. Um, and you notice he never answered my question. All right. So where was it going? So anyway, uh, this one young woman, her name is Zoe, out in New Mexico, decides to build her own home. She's trying to get bids on the plumbing. Um, I, she's trying to get bid on the plumbing. Couldn't get bids. Or, or maybe she got one, but it was, out of, it was incredible, out of sight price. Just like 8-Bit Vinyl got an insane price on replacing a septic system. She finds out about me. She has to have me draw her isometric so she can get a permit. And then she, she finds out that I do phone coaching. And so she emails me and says, wow, can I talk? I'm going to do my own plumbing. Is, can you talk me through it? I said, absolutely. I think we had three total phone calls, maybe over two different days. 
she um, understands she had never done this before. And I'm talking about putting in the four inch pipe, all the building drain stuff. I mean, the hard stuff under the slab. The stuff up above is easy, man. That's easy stuff. Plumbing inspector comes out, looks at it. And he says, who put this in? And she goes, uh, I did. Why is there a problem? <laughs> he goes, this is the best DIY installation I've ever seen in my 30 years inspecting. She said, he said, how did you know how to do this? <laughs> and so he says, oh, I talked to a guy named Tim Carter up in New Hampshire. He, he told me how to do it over the phone. <laughs> He couldn't believe it. He said, it's better than like 30% of the regular plumbers I inspect every week. <laughs> God bless Zoe. God bless Zoe. Oh, my gosh. Um, Meryl, you're welcome. Just ask the installers. Tell them to show you how they're going to get that thing right in the center of the stud. All right, Bob, uh, if you install a turbine vent, should you? No, leave the ridge vent the way it is. Leave it Leave it there. You can't have too, enough ventilation. It's just that you need to understand. I, I, I've, I've seen it in their marketing for years. They say it exhausts hot air. It's like, well, how? Show me how it does it. Hot air rises. It doesn't go down. Just like, oh, okay, so I'm going to go off the rails here a minute. Um, about a month ago, Maybe a little longer ago, I got a, uh, a, a this public relations woman reached out to me. Her name is Megan. She says, hey, hey, we got this new flushable wipe, you know, blah, 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 um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, you know, can we send? Yeah, go ahead, send it. I'll, I'll test it. I'll test it. All right. I'm never going to flush it. I said, hey, you've seen my video, right? No, um, no. I, I said, well, you better watch my video. So I, she watched it. And I said, if you want your client, if you if your client wants me to reset up and re, and test their video, test their wipe, I'll do it. I'll do it. You know, it's going to cost them, but I'll I'll do it. I'm happy to do it. They passed. They didn't want to do it. Might not be in our budget. It's going to be pretty expensive. It's going to be five figures to do it. All right. She sends me the wipes. Um, I start using them. They they're pretty good. They hold together. Um, they hold together. They don't tear while you use them. So that's good. That's the first, that's the most important thing. And um, and then she showed me a video that was done by some Canadian test lab. Um, I thought it was an inferior video because it did not show you the length of the pipe and what happened. It just showed putting the flush the the wipe in the toilet, flushing it. And then the next thing you saw was the camera was down where the pipe enters this clear tub like I had. And sure enough, when it got there, um, it had started to fall apart. So I decided to, um, I, I, she, she asked me, well, how's the testing going? I, I, you know, about a week or so ago, I said, well, it's going pretty good. Um, blah, blah, blah. I said, um, I said, but I looked at the label and on the label of your flushable wife, it says safe for all toilets and well-maintained septic systems. And I said, what I started to do three days ago is I took one of your wipes and I put it in a clear bowl of water. Um, I said, I know that's not perfectly realistic because there's no fecal matter but bacteria in the bowl. That'd be pretty gross. But I'm thinking about doing it, actually. I'm actually thinking about doing this out in the garage. Kathy would never let me do it inside. Anyway, and I said, in the past three days, the, the wipe has not broken down at all. And I said, in a septic tank, once the wipe enters the tank, that's it. There's no more turbidity. None. I mean, the water inside a septic tank is just static. So I said to her, I said, please, please send me, uh, I want to see the photographs and I want to see the testing and I want to see the whole way you tested it in septics because I want to see how you did it. I want to see what you did or what magic septic tank you had to make these things break apart. All right. So I didn't hear anything back for days. So I thought, oh, she's dodging me. 
Well, I heard back from her this morning. So she's, they're having a meeting with a client and they're going to they're going to get me the stuff. So we're going to see. I should probably do the poll. I, I It's pretty gross. I already know. I'm going to probably do it, but it's going to be so gross. Oh, my gosh, it's going to be gross. Um, but I think I think I have to do the po I think I have to do my own test uh, and uh, see what happens if if the bacteria will um, break up the wipe. So I think I'm going to do that. Uh, Gianni says, one should have an attic fan along with mushroom vents. Um, no, you don't need it. That's a great question. Uh, you don't need a, you're, you're probably talking about a PAV, what we call a PAV, which is an acronym for powered attic ventilator. No, you do not need a powered attic ventilator. Uh, you just need really high quality turbine vents. You just have to put enough of them in. Uh, and the company that makes the best ones down south, the Lomanco, L-O-M-A-N-C-O, they've got a, they, they show you exactly how to size it. Um, you want to put them in as close to the top of the roof as you can. Uh, but you don't want to be able to see them from the street, you know, when you're out on the street. Um, and trust me, there's going to be enough wind at your home to, to, to suck the air out of your attic. They're absolutely fantastic. ISO one. Thank you. When I start my project, I'll take it. Yeah, you should call. You should have you should schedule a call to me on the phone. I don't understand why more people don't do it. <clears throat> I. Over the past week, <clears throat> I've gotten probably 10 or 15 um, emails into my. Um, Ask Tim tough ones <clears throat> where, I, <clears throat> where I responded back. Typically, if, if someone's asking me a question, I can answer it. Yes or no. In one sentence, I answer it. I don't I don't try to get. I don't try to push everybody into a call. It's stupid. If I can't talk to them, if I if I can't talk to them for fifteen minutes, I've, I've I'm just wasting everybody's time, and I'm stealing money from them. And out of those um, fifteen people, see, I mean, some serious issues where if they make a mistake, it's going to cost them ten or twenty grand. Not one of them does the call, and I always put in their reply email: the call's free. If you if you don't get any value in the call, it's free. <clears throat> I, I don't I just can't figure it out. Why would someone say, nope, nope, I, I, I you know, I'm going to spend I'm about to spend 10 grand. And uh, and I've and, and the reason <clears throat> think about this. They already know they're already admitting that they don't know what's going on. That's why they came to my website and typed out their question. Do you understand that? They already are saying, I don't know what in the F is going on. <laughs> I need your help. And then when I tell them it's way too much to type, there's a lot of moving parts. Um, here's how I do these. You never hear back. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. I'm trying to help these people. Why won't they invest fifty dollars? They already have the fifty dollars because they're getting ready to spend five or ten or fifteen grand. All right. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know what to say. If you have any questions about your home, now's the time to ask it. Anything, ask anything you want. I don't care what it is. You can ask me any question about anything. You could ask me, why in the world do you have in your flipping office an, an FA-18 model, all right? An FA-18, you know? That's a Blue Angels, by the way. That's a Blue Angels plane. Why in the world would I have one of those in my office? Obi, offer signed a piece of two by four with every call. Oh, yeah, that's right. We forgot to do that. Um, so are you going to do, are you going to put that up on eBay? Because I know I can't do it. Tell me, I forgot all about that. You should have reminded me. I'll, I've got the, I've got some two by threes here that are even better because they're smaller. Um, I will cut them up. I've got, I've got, I'll do it tomorrow. I've got the miter saw already set up down back. 
Uh, I'll cut some pieces. I'll sign them. You tell me where to send them. Is that what, is that the deal? And you're going to try to sell them on eBay? I would love to see what happens. Is that the deal? Oh, you're keeping it. <laughs> I thought that you were going to, I thought that you were going to try to sell it on eBay to show. See, and now I thought that was the bet because I was going to prove to you that no one's going to pay because they're going to go, who's Tim Carter? N never heard of the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to send you one. I'm happy to send you one. Okay. You know how to get a hold of me. Get, send me your your um send me your uh address. I'm not going to send you a six inch long one. I have a special box that we set, you know, that we mail these guys out in. So I will send you a two by three signed and made out to you. All right. I'll write something really funny on the back. You're gonna love what I write on the back. <laughs> So go, you know how to email me. You know what to do. Give me your address. I'm not going to give it out. And I will, I swear to God, I will mail this to you tomorrow. Um, all right. D D5, X5. I have an old horse barn with a dirt floor. Okay. Would it be worthwhile to try to dig it out to pour concrete? Make, um, I don't know. The answer is um, yes, it might be. I mean, might be. I don't, I don't know what you're going to do. Um. I mean, I would only just so you know, that's a great question, by the way. It's really a great question. And if I was advising you, I would go, what kind of condition is the barn in? I mean, is the barn in really great shape? And are we going to compromise the barn, the structure, by putting this slab in? Like how what, what's the what's the detail of where the slab ends and, and where the wood of the barn starts you know that that's a really critical thing because we don't want to rot out the barn all right so there i mean there's all kinds of ways to protect against that all right i can i can i can talk about that until the cows come home mm -hmm. um so if the barn's in good shape um i mean think of all the uses i mean workshop i mean uh, i mean obviously if it's a horse barn it must have a pretty big opening I always thought that barns have like an eight foot wide opening for the, the doors. I mean, pull cars in their trucks. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, I think that it would be worth it if, as long as you can, you've got a use for it. So, um, all right. So ice has got a question I've missed. Uh, can I connect two exhaust fans, shower and toilet to a single exhaust if both fans have a backflow? Uh, no, 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 no. You're going to, they're going to be separately vented. Nope, not doing it. Uh, and what you should use, just so you know, I have a, go to my website. I'll show you exactly what you should do. There's a fan made that is made for this. There's a setup. Go to my website. I'll actually find it for you right now. That way you, I'll just save you the trouble. Here's what I put in my daughter's. Uh, exactly what you need is what I put in my daughter's house. So I'm pulling up the video for you. You got to watch this video. Come on, sometime today. Uh, all right, let's see here. I think this is. I think this is it. Um, I hope it's got the video in it. I'm pulling up. I'm pulling up the page on my website right now. Not at all happy with the title tag here. Yes, this is this is it. Horrible title tag. What is going on here? I just want to make sure. Yes, this is it. You have got to watch this video. This is the exact fan you want. And the better thing is the fan is remotely positioned. The fan is away from the bathrooms. So you're not going to hear the fan. You know, that's the biggest complaint a lot of people have with bathroom fans. They sound like they're inside a flipping jet engine. This one is way far away. So just watch that video. That's exactly what you need. I, I'm telling you, I wish every live stream was like this. The questions today are unbelievable. You've got such great questions today. Oh, my gosh. And Jason, million-dollar signature. We're going to see. We're going to see if he gets a million bucks for it. I hope you give me at least 10% if you get a million dollars. Oh, it's a two-story barn. Um, 
I'm telling you what, I think it's going to be amazing if, if you put that floor in. You just have, there's some detail work so you don't ruin the barn. That's all. All right, Gianni. Oh, you've got some great questions here today. You're you're scoring today, man. Gianni is scoring. He's getting so much help. You, you would have paid $150 for all this information, just so you know. So tell all your friends about it. I mean, at the very least, I hope you go sign up for my newsletter. My goodness. Please go. If I've helped you today, please go sign up for my newsletter, okay? I'm not going to stalk you. I don't spam you. I don't sell your email address. None of that. Just go sign. Just go to the homepage of AskTheBiller.com and sign up. All right. <clears throat> Door contractor mismeasured jam size by one inch. Wants to bump out the jam instead of replacing frame. No, no. We're going to get the right one. No, no. Not doing it. Yes, you insist on a new frame. Expensive door. Um, I. It's too bad. I mean, I just don't. Um, I mean, I can. <clears throat> Al Portland. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, <laughs> Jason's making me laugh. All right. So, um, so Gianni. Um, I can tell you right now, that, and, and I'm not. I'm just being honest here with you. This is worthy of one of my paid phone calls. All right. I'm going to give you the link. You should go, go sign up for it right now. And you need to send me some photos of what's going on because we may, we may be able to, um, it may work. It may work, but I need to see photos. I need, I, we need to talk it through. Um, it could save a lot of heartache on the contractor's part. You might get a discount. You might be able to negotiate a discount. I mean, there's all kinds of things in play here. It's going to be the best $50 you've ever spent on this project, right? So go sign up. And after you sign up, um, we'll reach out to you. And and uh, my assistant, Ellen, will reach out. And y you'll see how it works. All right. It's I need to know more. I mean, it's the best money. It's the best money you're going to spend on this project. So... You're a witness here. You're going to see if Gianni, I mean, here he's talking about it's an expensive door. He's got this potential conflict situation with a contractor. He could actually mess up his home, mess up the value of his home, all because of $50. So we're going to see if Gianni, we're going to see what decision he makes. And um, we'll see. Gianni, no audio. I, I don't know. It doesn't matter. I, I, I can do it via email. I can... In, I can tell you in 15 minutes, I can just keep track of my time, tell you what to do. So if you can't do audio, I don't care. We don't do it. I've done my 15-minute consults with people who are deaf. I've done it before. Hello, Abu. Greetings from uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, we've learned from you. Thank you very much. You're, you're quite welcome. Um, you're welcome. Uh, I know you build a, very differently than we do here in America. So um, good. Just sign up for my newsletter. That's, all, that's how you can repay me. I just want everybody to sign up for my newsletter. Nothing's hard about it at all. All right. What other questions do you have before I get out of here? A um, lot of great questions today. Holy tomato. If every, I wish every live stream was like this. Um, happy to. Uh, that's why I'm here. I do the live streams. Uh, so, you know, uh, Abu, just so you know, th this, this may be of interest to you. Uh, this Saturday, so that would be today's Wednesday. So three days from now, I'm going to do a live stream in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning, Eastern time, which I would think for you, oh my gosh, let's see. I would think that, so Paris is uh, five right now because of the daylight savings, Paris is five. I would think that, see, where'd you say you were? Saudi Arabia. So Saudi Arabia has got to be uh, six, seven, maybe seven hours difference, seven hour time difference. It'd be my guess. Are we seven hours time difference? So is it... Um, is it just after midnight in Saudi Arabia right now, Abu? I could ask, I could ask the, the trollop. That's what I call her. I call her the trollop. So uh, I'll ask her right now. Hey Alexa, what time is it in Saudi Arabia? In Saudi Arabia, it's twelve fourteen a.m. Yeah, I was right. Seven hours. So it's just after midnight. So anyway, yeah, there we go. Bingo. You and you and the trollop had the same time. Good for you. That means uh, Saturday, um, I would be on at 2 in the afternoon. So 2 in the afternoon this Saturday, your time, I'm going to be live for what it's worth, um, if, if you're interested. I don't, I don't know. 
I, it may be a holy day. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what religion you practice, whatever. So, oh, you're retired. Good for you. Uh, very cool. Um, anyway, um, good for you to stay up that late. I can't. I, just, you, you and my wife would get along really well. All right. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I am by, by midnight, the whole bedroom is filled with Z's. I mean, there's so many Z's in the room. When Kathy comes in from watching TV, she's got to run over to the French door and open it up and push a bunch of the Z's out <laughs> or otherwise she'll suffocate on all the Z's that are in the room. <laughs> That's not my idea. That was an old, old uh, cartoon, probably 40, 50 years old from BC. Remember that comic strip BC, you know, the prehistoric guys, Stone Age guys. There, there was a comic strip about what's his name? The main character in BC falling asleep and he's having to wake up and push Z's out of the cave. <laughs> All right, enough is enough. Um, all right, I'm going to get out of here. I, I, uh, there's no more questions. It looks like, and um, you got. Um, I, I wore you out. I, you, everybody has such great questions. Great questions today. Uh, fantastic questions. I, um, like I said, I wish every live stream was this way. Amazing questions. Um, and D5X, if you're still here, I'm really fascinated about this barn. If you go through this project. Um, uh, you're very welcome, Abu. You're thank you for being here. Thank you for checking in. I um, I'm honored. I mean, I'm seriously, I'm honored to have international people watch the stream. Really, am just amazing. Um, the um, so anyway, DX five barn. You could uh, you could open up a whole plethora of uh. Uh, possibilities by by putting that concrete floor in. But you need to understand, you need to go to my website. If you're going to do this, you got to do it right. You can make all kinds of mistakes. I have all kinds of columns about how to put the concrete in, what you have to do, the correct vapor barrier, blah, blah, blah. It's really, once again, you should be doing what Gianni, does. you should hopefully do what Gianni's going to do. You should be getting a consult call with me or, or you can make some grave mistakes. Uh Okay, good. All right. So yeah, I you should uh, you should do one of my consult calls. It's the, it will be the best money. And once again, here's the you can't go wrong, man. If if after the call you you hang up and you go, well, that was a waste of time. I mean, you know, you you would never say that to me in person. Um, but you would go, what a loser. That, that old goat, he doesn't know squat. So all you have to do is you just email me so that way it's not confrontational and you say, hey, I'd like to take advantage of your money back guarantee. I go, okay. I just send back, okay. That's all I say. I just say, okay. I forward it to Kathy. I say, give this guy his money back. That's how I do it. It's just very few people have done it, but there have been people who've done it. Uh, all right, great. Okay. I, uh, I, I think it sounds really like a cool project. I mean, man, I mean, it's, um, I can just think of a lot of things to do in the barn, man. I mean, and, and just so, just so you know, I mean, like, just I'll get you thinking over the weekend. If you're going to go to all this work, you have got to put a bathroom in. I mean, seriously, you've got to, we've got a pipe and it's really simple to do. I can walk you through it just like I walk Zoe. But I mean, imagine having a, a full bathroom out there, you know, just a, a toilet, a sink and a shower. I mean, I think, imagine the possibilities. Maybe you turn this thing into an Airbnb. I, I don't, there's, who knows? There's all kinds of possibilities, Commander. That's all I can tell you. Really sounds ex exciting. Okay, I'm going to go. Um, absolutely a bathroom is possible. Absolutely. Is the barn higher up in elevation from the house? In other words, is the barn up on a hill? Yes or no? Lower. Okay. It, it's possible. It just means you would have to put in its own septic system. But what I'm trying to say is you have this opportunity to pipe it. And even if it's never turned into a bathroom, the piping is there. And when you go to sell the property, a future buyer would go, are you serious? I mean, this is awesome. Yeah, we've got the money. We'll put a separate septic system in. So, I, I mean, it, it uh, it's so simple because we can hide all the piping. In other words, 
where the toilet flange is, where the toilet flange is going to go, when you put the concrete in, there's a special way to do it that you you like concrete over the pipe, but we mark where it is and it's and, and the concrete's only like this thick, you know, only like a quarter inch thick. And you just chop through it really simple and attach your toilet flange. Same thing, same thing for where the tub or the shower drain would be. Same thing. So simple to do, man. Oh my gosh. You don't have to have pipes sticking up. All right. Anyway, we'll talk about it if you decide to do it. All right, I'm gonna go. Um Thanks very much for being here. Uh, remember, if you are watching now and you're interested in watching the stream on Saturday morning, just going to do an experiment. If there's not many people, uh, I'm just going to bug out. You know, I, I just we're just going to try doing one on Saturday morning. Um, Abu's got an interesting comment. You're lucky you have big store like Home Depot and Lowe's and others. We wish it really interesting. Um, so Abu, uh, real quickly, tell me. Um, what what's your equivalent over there to Home Depot and Lowe's? Do you have anything? In other words, for homeowners that need building supplies, where do they buy them? Uh, Steve wants to know if I'm retired. Uh, okay, Abu's going to leave. So just just if you just uh, if you all you have to do, Abu, is give me a name and I'll try to look it up on the web. If the company, if you have a company over there that sells building products to homeowners, just type the name in. I'll go try to look it up on the web. You don't have to type all the stuff. Uh, Steve, I am not retired. Okay, Jason, see ya. I am not retired. Um, I would say I'm semi-retired. And because of what's going on in the nation right now, I, I was trying to retire last fall. And it didn't work out. God said, God said to me, you're not retiring. Sorry. Too bad. Too bad. So I'm still a working stiff. Uh, I'm trying to build up my draw plumbing plans business uh, to do where I do two a day. I would love to do that. Uh, and um, anyway, I'm still doing Ask the Builder. It's really easy, but um, I'm not retired. Okay, smaller than Home Depot. Okay, wonderful. All right, well, thank you, Abu. Have a great night. I know it's very late there. Thank you for checking in. Great to see you. Great to hear from you. Um, thank you so much. And uh, feel free. Come back anytime. All right. All right. Thanks very much. All right, Abu. Have a great night and good night. And uh, Steve and Jason and DX5 and, oh, my gosh, so many. Gianni, if you're still here, um, thank you. Good night for putting in the Discord links. Uh, Roko, uh, Jimmy, um, so many people. Who am I forgetting? 8-Bit Vinyl. Meryl, Bob, look at all the people we had today checking in. Could be a record. Could have been. A, you might be here right now and you never checked in. You're not part of the record. <laughs> oh, and then LPN guy, LNP, LNP guy, smartass, says, Boston with my brother, where's the flipping whiteboard if he's still here? What a guy. That was great. Can you tell I'm having fun on the live streams? I mean, I'm having such fun. Uh, all right. Uh, Johnny's still here. Good. Good for you. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, all right. I, I'm going to go. I'm going to get out of here. Marcus. Oh, Marcus, you, you just slipped in under the wire, man. All right. I'll stay here for you for a little bit. All right. But here's the deal, Marcus. Um, have to, you have to tell me um, what's going on over in Ireland? Um, ask a question, kind of give me a full report. Just give me a little full report about what's happening in your life right now. I mean, I'm not trying to get too personal, but just, uh, I know it's okay to, but you're late. I, you've got a life to live. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I, uh, I love it when you come in, but just give me a little full report if you could, like what's going on over, over there. What's uh, any, any news, any, um, I don't care. Tell me what's going on. I know it's late. I know it's late over there. It's, uh, let's see, Ireland. So you are four hours behind right now. Because when I do my ham radio stuff, it's G uh, green minutes plus four. So it would be um, not too late, I guess. A little after nine o'clock. Um, need Ireland Times News. All right, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that is. I, I imagine it's a lot like all their other media, you know. The media here in the United States all tainted. It's all it's all tainted. It's bad. And I'm a, I'm a member of the working press. 
I'm a member of the working press and, and I don't trust anything from any of my peers. All right, Marcus, here we go. Now we're, now we're talking. The weather's getting cold. What? Two children just in bed. Good for you. There's little ones. Uh, watch Ukraine and praying for the people affected. Yeah. Um, oh, Marcus is in the nude. Um, so, um, so Kathy's, Kathy's beeping me. Uh, I'll see what that is in just a minute. Um, Damn lurkers. I know. Lurkers. Oh, everyone, just everyone hates lurkers. Everyone. There, there's not anyone that likes lurkers. No one likes lurkers. All right. Um, so Marcus, um, here's the problem with the whole Ukrainian thing. Um, so were you, um, Marcus, were you here the other day when I was talking about the bad guys and the need for a hideout? Um, just say yes or no. If that, if that, say yes or no. If that, if that rings a bell. If not, I'll, I'll just go into that real because I, I want to open your mind up and and anyone else who's here. Okay, Abu, I'll see you, buddy. Good night. So, Marcus, do you remember me talking about the bad guys and how bad guys need to have a hideout? Yes or no? I, there must be a little bit of latency uh, going on here. I'm not, Marcus. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Yeah. The refugees are coming. Yeah. Lots of millions. Yes. Okay. So you remember that. Okay, good. All right. So that's, is an older guy, you know, if Steve were here, you know, he lives south of you down in London, um, Silvertop, you know, that's what he calls me. And he's, he's very respectful when he says it, by the way. Um, I've just become so cynical that I don't, um, I just don't trust what's going on. And here, just so you know, here in America, some of the politicians that are like throwing all their support behind Ukraine, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And um, it doesn't make sense. All right. So anyway, I, I just think there's a lot more to what's going on than we will prop we may never know. We may never know. I just hope I just hope one thing. I just hope that here in America, for you just so you know, I hope our leader does not draw us into that conflict because it's gonna be it's gonna be like Texas Hold'em at that point, Commander. I don't know if you play poker over there in Ireland, but if you've not watched Texas Hold'em tournaments here in America, go to YouTube and watch it when, when the one guy, you know, they're, they they flipped over the last card. What is it called? The river card? I don't know. I'm, and then one of them says, I'm all in. <laughs> so it's going to be an all in situation. Not good. Not good. Um, yeah. No, no. That's why we have all the wars. I mean, any that that's what I'm trying, you know, we could talk about the river, but we, there, we, the, the the military, I mean, the military industrial complex, I mean, I mean, it, it's, it has to, you know, they're always, they always want wars everywhere because like the, the companies here in America, like Raytheon, Lockheed, I don't know how many others there are. They make all these missiles and bombs and napalm and whatever. I mean, they make all this stuff. It, they'll sell a bunch of it to the United States government, but when we get our fill, they're selling to all these other countries around the world. Are you kidding me? And, and, and the reason why is, is because they need to stay in business so that when there is a war in America, we've got a way to make weapons. All right? I mean, none of this is hard. None, none of this is hard. But it's not discussed. You don't see it discussed in the mainstream media, like what the, the mechanism, what's really going on. So uh, anyway, what do I know? What do I know? I never was even in uniform. People here have been in uniform, all right? And I uh, really appreciate your service to our great nation, as do my family, all right? So um, my dad was. I, you've heard me say that before. My dad was in World War II. He got the Bronze Star. Real hero, all right? So, um, um, all right. So anyway, the Ukraine, uh, yeah, I'm not. All those poor displaced people, horrible horrible. But why? That's a whole nother situation, the whole why thing. You know, so 
I still like my speculation. I really do. In other words, just take just take bad guys to the next level, man. Take it to the top level in the Game of Thrones. Take bad guys. Like so, in other words, there's bad guys in cities. There's like gangs. There's bad guys at like the state level. There's like mafia that's bad in the nation. Like we could have the mafia here, you know. And, and what's the what's the big big huge national gang in in Mexico? Something five? I don't know. What what's that? There's, they're really bad dudes. They're bad dudes. What's the name of that Mexican gang? Um, I can't remember. Anyway, somebody. Will, all the guys with the ba badass tattoos. MS13. Thank you. That's what I was thinking. I knew there was an M in it. Um, hi, Steve. How you doing? So. Let's take it to the next level. Let's let's assume we've got all these world leaders. How many countries are there in the world? Do you know? There's a hundred and what sixty something countries? Hundred and sixty something countries. I know from ham radio because it's it's a big number, all right? That's a big number. And some percentage of them are bad of the leaders, the leaders of these countries. All right. Some percentage are bad. And not all. Now think about it. If they got together, if they talked secretly and said, you know what? Imagine if we could like work together and do some really bad stuff. All right. So they have to have a hideout. I mean, seriously, they have to have a hideout because all bad guys have a clubhouse or a hideout. They seriously, they have they have a place where they get together. So if if this exists. Where, where would the bad guys meet? I mean, they're not going to the Arctic. They're not going to Antarctica. They're not meeting under the ocean. And, and they're most certainly, like any of those guys would say, well, we're not going to meet in my country. I mean, could you imagine being married and 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 you're in a gang and you, and you invite the whole gang over to your house? Your wife would not be happy. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so the bad guys say, look, we, we can't meet in my country. We have to go meet in some other country. We got to go meet somewhere else, man. I'm not saying this is happening. I'm just saying just take gangs to the next floor. Take it to the highest level of Game of Thrones. That's all. <laughs> all right. Uh, Marcus, Ukraine is bread bad. Yeah, you, I know. Here's what's bad about that. Get this. Here, here's what I've been thinking. So I saw in the news, Marcus, all these people like, and you don't blame them getting the hell out of the way. They don't want to get killed. So there's not going to be hardly any farming in the Ukraine this spring. Yeah, it's not good. All right. You know, what's, we had a politician here in America, maybe 10 years ago or so eight, 10 years ago, say elections have consequences. They sure as hell do. And so do wars. War, war has consequences. A lot of, sometimes unintended. There, There's one of them right there. No food. It's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. Um, yeah, gold. So exactly, Marcus, how many helicopters? Exactly, Marcus, exactly, exactly. All right, Gianni, got to go, man. I'm going to go too. I got off on a I got off on a tangent for Marcus because Marcus was here. Lynn, oh, I didn't know you were still here. Thank you. Um, hope I didn't scare you away. Sometimes I go off the rails. People, you know, pe we talk about current events here sometimes, you know, and I just kind of weigh in because you know because I'm a silver top, you know, and um, I just try to give my perspective. Not saying I'm right, and I'm absolutely not an expert in any of it. I just kind of throw stuff out there, like think about this possibility. Because the problem is we're not getting all the facts. So how can we possibly have an intelligent discussion about what's going on when we don't have all the facts? All right. Um, thank you, Lynn. Um, good luck with your concrete block repair. It's not that hard. You can do it. Watch those videos. All right, I'm going to get out of here. been here a long time, hour and a half. Plus, Kathy's chatted me up. I got to go see what Kathy wants. Love her to death. All right. Been married a long time. Whew, man, many years, many decades. All right. Got to go.
Thanks for being here. I'm Ash the Builder, Tim Carter. I'll be here tomorrow. Um, and I'm going to be here Saturday morning, too. We're going to do Saturday morning. one. And join the Discord. Absolutely. Join the Discord. There's the link to it. Thank you. Good night for doing it. Thank you for being here. Marcus, have a great night, buddy. Kiss those little ones for me. Um, Gianni, thanks for being here. Steve, everyone, boy, great, great live stream today. So many great questions. Holy tomato. Holy tomato. Great question. All right. Got to go. I'm Tim Carter. This has been Ask the Builder. I should be here tomorrow. Thanks for being here.